Hi, and welcome to Red Carpet With. I'm your host, Raja Azuni. Today, we have a very special episode of Red Carpet With, as we have a very special guest for you today. Some of you may still remember her from the iconic Uthman Hafsham comedy film back in the early 80s called Mechanic, and later the TV sitcom 2 Plus One. So I think she had made an impact, such a big impact with her acting that some of us have remained fans ever since. This is one lady who, who had made such a big impact with her acting and still has a lot more to offer. So it's our pleasure to welcome veteran actress, <gasps> producer, and director extraordinaire, Miss Susan Lancaster. Thank you, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to the show, Susan. Thank you, thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure, of course. You know, before we get to talking about um, some of your more recent projects, yes. uh, let's backtrack a little. Okay, so you've stayed under the radar for some 15 years until about some two years ago. Yeah. So tell us, what made you drop out of the scene all of a sudden and what were you really up to? Well, um, I think I needed to take a break. I mean, that time I was young and I was doing a lot of dramas and sitcoms for the channels then. We don't have other channels or as many channels as we did then, as we do now. Um, <clears throat> and I think the scripts were beginning to get a bit stale. Uh, there's so many characters that you can play as in a Matsali woman marrying a Malay guy and changing her religion and getting in trouble with her in-laws. So after a, while, <laughs> sure. after a while, you sort of think like, okay, I need a break. So I took a break. I traveled. I did more theater. Uh, I started up a landscaping company, ID Landscaping, because I like working with my hands. Um, and, uh, uh, and then a couple of years ago, uh, somehow or other, friends just started saying, hey, can you just do a small bit for me here? And can you do a little bit of theater here? And then could you produce this? And then it's just started all over again so but I'm really really happy to be back uh, because it's on my own terms um, it's nice doing something that you're really passionate about but um, having the chance to do it because you really want to and not because you have to do you understand what I mean yeah yeah completely okay so you were not just an actress right if I remember correctly you were also a singer back then oh no we have a studio album to boot and the album did pretty well if I remember yeah, it was not bad, actually. Yeah, um, I think I was one of the few different ones then. The music, uh, Warner Music then, um, decided to take a chance on me because I was doing a Duo Champus 2 Plus 1 then, and I guess because of the ratings for that uh, program, they thought that why not get her to, because I was always singing on the set anyway, get her to do an album, and the album did really well. It was, it was great, great fun. But um, I decided that after that, that I'm cut out to be an actor more than I am a performer on stage because I find it very nerve-wracking to go out and sing to a lot of people. I could go out and do a monologue, no problem. But go out and sing, can't do it. That's why I was doing the Madonna thing. I was dancing with my dancers because I wasn't alone on stage. I was quite happy to, to go, <laughs> you know, yeah. Vogue and right. whatever, yeah. but not sort of stand there alone and sing. It would just... Yeah make my stomach churn. Yeah. Mm. And funny you should say that because I think I might have remembered seeing you on TV donning a black Versace leather jacket mm. doing Antara Dua yes. Zaman with yes. a bunch of dancers yes. doing exactly what you said. Yes. Right? Yes. But I think that was for AIM. Was it? And I did it with, and I did another song with Dato S.M. Salim, bless him. Right. Right. And I do remember vaguely you saying that, wow, now I know how it feels to be a rock star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right? it's, yeah, it was great at the time. But after yeah. that, I realized the amount of effort that singers have, have to do and, and, and the amount of time that's taken away from them to promote the album, uh, it's crazy. Um, and I have total respect for what they do, uh, especially those who can actually really, really sing. I was born with a set of lungs, but a set of lungs to perform on stage and not really to sing, I, my, the caliber is, I'm nowhere near, any, in anywhere near the, like Ning or, or, or uh, Attilia. They're amazing, you know, um, but I respect them. Okay, early on you said um, that you love working with your hands. Yes. And I'm not sure many people know this, but your father was a planter. Yes, he was. Um, your mom's really good with plants. Yes. You were born in Johor Bahru yes. and grew up in Moa. Johor, <laughs> baby! Huh? Okay. Well, yes, uh, the estate was in Moi. Um, hmm. I was there till I, uh, I think they came up to KL to put me in school when I was about four and a half. Mm -hmm. So otherwise I was born and bred in Johor. 
I still call my You do? Yeah. How often do you, do you still? I drive down, I go to Singapore a lot, so I'm driving mm -hmm. through Johor all the time, and then we're shooting this um, uh, uh, family sitcom called Kwage Skanda mm -hmm. for another channel. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're based in Johor there, so ironic. Okay, yeah. so, all right, now, um, more on the performing arts yes. for you. So you were back mm -hmm. on the scene, now coming yes. back for, from where we left off, yes. you were back on the scene after a 15 year hiatus. Yes. And uh, back doing mainly theatre, I believe. Yes. Right? And took on the role of director for The Good Body. Yes. By Eve Ansler. Yes. Amazing, uh. amazing play. Yes. Mm -hmm. Six women mm -hmm. um, uh, performed the monologues for that um, for about a week. And uh, we, we gave away uh, one night towards a charity, the Women's Aid Organization, towards abused women. But um, I like doing stuff like that. Uh, that tells a story and that you can actually give away tickets, I mean money, to mm. those, the needy. Um, right. And uh, not only that, um, my very good dear friend Ida Narina was in that play as well. Sure. Yeah. And I remember you had to take over, was it after, on the third night or something? Yes. That um, very unfortunate night. Yes. yes. Then I had to step into her shoes. So that was a challenge for <laughs> me as well to direct and then suddenly try to memorize her lines and immediately step in just in shock. I must admit, that night, performing her scene the first night mm -hmm. after seeing her in hospital, I broke mm. down on stage because mm. it's just, you're in her shoes, right. in doing her character in the zone, right. and you're feeling everything. Yeah. At the same time, I could imagine her um, in hospital. Anyway, whatever. Okay, right. And then, okay, now, there was uh, What Will Break You and Apocalypse. Yes. Okay, but I think you went on um, to direct a short film called The Toast after that. Yes. Yeah, but we're going to talk more about that after the break. Uh, we have to take a short break and stay tuned for more from Miss Susan Lancaster right after this. Hi, welcome back. Hi, welcome back. You're now watching Red Carpet with <laughs> Miss Susan Lancaster. Uh, Award-winning actress, oh producer, and director. So, just before the break, we yes. were just talking about you directing a short film called The Toast. Yes. But just a little bit before that, I think um, there was What Will Break You and Apocalypse. Yes. Would you like to share a little about that? Yes. Yeah. Um, what Will Break You and Apocalypse was a double-hander theatre production that um, I produced. But I, um, I invited Ida Arena to direct, uh, which I which was an amazing production and I'm really glad that she did um, after her accident uh, because now she's on to directing and producing and now performing on stage again. Uh, it goes to show that, you know, a little bit of um, positive thinking, a little bit of a push and anybody can do anything. Yeah? Sure. Right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and she's a great, great example to people in her situation. Okay, so... Now, let's the move toast. on to the yes, toast. The yes, the toast, yes. The first ever short film that you've directed, yes. that you had directed. Yes. So, okay, tell us about that. How did that come about? Uh, Ika Mayang, which is a company on its own, but it's it's connected to Capicom, and it's run, headed by Ngai Wen and her team of wonderful people. And they decided to do this sort of women's festival uh, three years ago, and they called it Ika Mayang, which is because of rambut, hmm. hitam, yang lebat, and whatever. Yeah. Um, that was the theme. And uh, uh, about 15 of us were picked to direct mm -hmm. um, and maybe write our own scripts uh, for a 10 minute short. So I said that I didn't want to write because I felt it would be too close to me. So I was, I was happy to pick up anyone's script. So they happened to say, uh, Faye Koo is a writer, she, we could ask her to write. So I said, okay, great, get Faye to write a short script for me. Um, and she did, and it was this stunning story that crossed um, uh, race, racial uh, diversities, mm -hmm. uh, class, um, and also any kind of other stigma that we have. And it was set in in present day the, uh, and the early 80s and the late 70s. So mm -hmm. this procession of these characters from kids to teenagers to matured women. And uh, Faye picked on how one friend would sacrifice her life and be raped mm. to save the other friend's life. Right. And she took her life after that because of society. And okay. in 10 minutes, we had to, 
I had to shoot that in yeah. two days. Really? In two days? In two days. That story had to come out. So, you know, if you get to see it, it's, if it's a little bit raw around the edges, just understand that in two days we had to shoot and try and get that story out and edit it mm -hmm. to get it ready for the festival. Right, okay. I didn't know about the two days. Yeah, so yeah. everybody had two days to shoot it. Okay, so, so but yeah, and still, you were a first time film director then. Yes. Yeah, and um, how was that I different? I loved it. I loved it. It was so much fun. Shooting film and being on stage, it's the same kind of attitude, I think. You just have to be professional. You have to respect each other's work, your crew, you know, what you do as a, as a director and the people that surround you in your cast and everyone else. I think that you should have a good family around you and you must make mm -hmm. sure that there's this mutual respect. Yeah. Everybody will do what they need to do, just trust and just go with it. Uh, it's likewise, it's, it's kind of how I, um, I keep, sorry, my cat's fur. Um, <laughs> I, I keep- Catwoman Productions. And yes, all, yeah. there you go. Um, I, I have the same kind of attitude uh, towards my theatre productions as well. It's sort of like we come together and, and we make this beautiful thing happen. We give birth to a story. Okay, so um, which was the favorite, your favourite part of the film and why? Oh, in the toast? In the toast, yeah. Um, this may sound really sick, but it was the rape scene. Because I had to shoot it tastefully, mm -hmm. And it was shot in this park in Smack and Tamantun, and there were kids and parents playing around. We had to go off in a corner mm -hmm. and shoot the scene without actually, because I had to make sure that it couldn't be censored. The censorship board would have censored it, right? Yeah. So I had to make sure it was tastefully done. So it was like two cameras. I had two cameras going, and it was shots of this guy grabbing her, and then shots of her legs and him pulling her into the bushes, and a lot of screaming and struggling. And it was right. more focusing on him going, her! and then her legs and everything, mm -hmm. which told the story mm -hmm. in a very um, in a very PC kind of manner. But you knew exactly what was going on, of course, with a little bit of dramatic background music. It was all fast cut. And I was like, not bad. Was it awkward, though, being um, having to do that in public, like you say, in the park and that sort of thing with well, children around? And I was the one who chose the location, so. OK. Um, All right. But it was because the location was perfect for that particular scene because prior to that they have a picnic. So in the picnic they walk up this, this sort of lane okay. and this psycho is there. Right. So you needed it all in this... Obviously you see this green leafy uh, area and think like, oh, wonderful, mm -hmm. beautiful. And you never expect the worst thing to happen to you there. So you need to find those, dim uh, those sort of like, yeah. you know, black and white kind of ABCs and find the spots to make it unsuspecting, I guess. So okay. you have the background sound of people playing in the park. So it sounds all very serene. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, boom. All right. So how much was put into making the film? How I mean, much? in terms of effort, not just the dollars and cents, but yeah. in terms of effort as well. Um, well, I had to cast for these wonderful characters. And these characters actually were in three different gener generations. So they were like eight-year-old girls, then young teenagers going to boarding school and then mother ages. So there were three generations and I had to make sure one was a Indian character and the other one was a Chinese character. So I had to make sure I had to find the right kind of cast. And, and did that you? Is tough. Yeah, I did found them. Did you think you did, yeah? Who's in the movie? Uh, well, the names that you'd know is uh, Mary George and Peggy Ung. Um, and the other four girls, no, oh. well, nobody knows them, but I think um, after that I actually said, you know, go and learn theater, go and study go to Joe Hashem or someone mm -hmm. and then just hone what you have because it was definitely in them. Right. And I like seeing that in new talent. That, yeah. You know, there's that fire. Yeah. You just need someone to bring it out. Yeah. But I think you have a certain knack for that, um, I'm told. Thank you. <laughs> you know, you've managed to unearth one or two people in the past. Well, I'd like to, yes. I'd like to believe in that, yes. Okay, all right. So do you think these people, these people that you picked um, from the toast yes. will have a bright future, like the girls that you were saying? Definitely. Yeah. Um, I initially when I, because I had to rehearse them, yeah. uh, irrelevant of two days in shooting, these are newbies, they've mm -hmm. never, including Peggy and Mar uh, Mary, they are more stage actors, they're mm -hmm. not familiar with the camera in their face. Mm -hmm. So I made sure that at least I rehearse them uh, three times, a mm -hmm. couple hours, mm -hmm just rehearsed them, go through the lines and made them understand what kind of emotions they had to go through. But I didn't want it staged and I didn't want it theatric, too exactly. theatrical. So I needed them to also have that rawness and just go for it when the adrenaline kicks in, when you say action, the camera's in your face. Okay. Um, and yes, they have it. 
initially when you rehearse them, you're going, oh no, did I do the right thing? But they obviously it's nerves. And then when you just show them, and you, I guess if you show them that you trust them, they have confidence in themselves as well, which is really important. Okay, great. So, all right, now the Toads is part of the Ika Mayang series of short films, mm -hmm. right? Um, produced and written by women yes. for other women. Yes. So obviously there's a message to be, an important message to be told. Well, it's empowering women, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. But as a director, um, how do you think you've managed to put that message across in just 12 and a half minutes? Oh, you put 12 and a half minutes. That's yeah. because of the subtitles yeah. and blah, blah, blah. But actually the, the movie itself is 10 minutes. Um, well, one is to respect another, uh, 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 to respect a writer's writing. Mm -hmm. to try and do justice to what they've written because it is their story and as a director you have to put it onto the screen okay so you need to be able to find the flow with the storyline and actually make sure that the story uh, the pictures correlate to what's actually been written um, sometimes when there's too much dialogue and it gets a bit too draggy that's the director's call to be able to sort of rearrange the dialogue per se so that it then becomes a bit more of a quick cut as opposed to having a huge monologue and then that's going to, you have to keep that in and it's going to slow everything else down. So you, you have to make that call sometimes. Um, but as a message to women, it's really just, um, uh, I think we have been overlooked. Um, I think there, there's a lot of women talent out there in Malaysia. And um, I think, you know, Ikal Mayang, uh, in all intents and purposes, what it's done is it's actually inviting you to come out and show your talent. Um, uh, and they're a wonderful group of people who are willing to listen to your stories. And if they think you're good enough, they'll take your story and make it into a movie. And that's why they always invite everyone every year to send their stories in. OK, so now there was a premiere of The Toast together with all the Ika Mayang 2013 series of films organized sometime in 2015. Yes. Right? But after that, the toast was never screened anywhere else. Yep. So, but soon, viewers of the ABN channel will be able to watch the toast on their TV screens. Yay! Courtesy of Garang Pictures. Excellent. So, Susan, yes. what would you like to say to all the viewers out there? Um, mm -hmm. To all the viewers out there, um, I hope you take this story with a pinch of salt. Um, uh, with a pinch of salt is a, as in how I shot it and maybe there was certain glitches um, technically but understand the storyline and understand the effort that the f one two three four six act actors um, actually seven including the one guy uh, the effort that they went through um, I think it was also heart-wrenching for them for particular scenes for them to step into uh, the shoes of the abused or the abuser um, and um, and also to understand what it's like to be in that position and also reasons why sometimes human beings take, take their lives uh, because of lack of support. And I think this story actually shows that when people are going through problems and if you can you know, sense that there's something going on with them, help them be a shoulder to them or at least send them to a professional so that you can help them because there's no point there's no point people just doing things and it's happening a lot these days and I think it's it's peer pressure it's it's you know what's going on in the social world etc and it's really unnecessary and I hope that the toast explains that to you thank you very much Susan thank for you the insight uh, to your short film thank you so and of course thank you very much for being here with us okay. you know it's been great catching up with you my pleasure. Um, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for you today. No! <laughs> but for the latest updates, go to redcarpet.net.my and, uh, and don't forget to watch Red Carpet With on ABN Channel 201 as we bring you interviews with interesting personalities every week. Thank you very much. Till next time. Have a pleasant weekend.